Wednesday at WFTL. The following is a paid program. The content has been provided by the advertiser. WFTL, its staff, management, and ownership are not responsible for the content. Some of the opinions and endorsements provided here in were in exchange for compensation. This is the Morris DuPont Law Show. Heard every Saturday at 2 p.m. and Sundays at 1 on 850 WFTL. Call in now with your questions about foreclosure, loan modification, student loan debt settlement, and bankruptcy. 877-850-8585. That's 877-850-8585. And now your hosts, Will Morris and Shay DuPont. Good afternoon, Mr. Morris. Good afternoon, Ms. Dufour. Oh, it's so good to be back on the we air. We are back on the air. Can you believe it? I absolutely can. My name is Shay Dupont. I'm here with my law partner, Will, Will Morris. Will Morris, and we are uh, the partners of the law firm of Morris Dupont. Morris Dupont is a law firm that specializes, shall we say, Will, in consumer law? Consumer law. That's a good way to it's put it. It's hard to categorize yeah, it, really. Yeah, yeah. When you've got your foreclosures, your loss mitigation, your short sales, your your loan modifications, your student loans, your bankruptcies, all these are consumer-related issues, are they not? Absolutely. Yeah, what think, what we're think, trying yeah. to do is help homeowners, basically, but also that sort of spread out to really helping any consumer out there that Absolutely. is having problems, struggling, uh, you know, n unable to pay their debts, and we're trying to help those people out. We're trying to educate them. We're going to be here every Saturday and again every Sunday, a repeat of the Saturday show, giving consumers the information they need to navigate these treacherous times when they have all these debt and they don't know what to do and how to deal with it. We can help them. I am so excited to be here. back on We're the air. back in the air. Look at us. The Morris DuPont Law Show. Yeah. Brand new. Yep. Right here on 850 WFTL. Well, let's back it up a little bit and say uh, we're back on the air. We're right. back on the air because uh, we've actually been hosts of another radio show for five, five years. years. <laughs> uh, it's, it, it's, you know, it's a new home, you know, and, and probably going to come with a few bumps as the new homes do. But no. we're going to figure them out, and we're going to come back and give the people the same sort of show we were giving them for the last five years, educating them, letting them know what we have discovered, what we have been doing for the last six years, and educating and, and telling them that there is help and there is hope out there. And we can be the ones to provide that help. That's right. And the good news is, if you have any questions, if you are going through anything with your, maybe your mortgage lender, maybe you're considering bankruptcy, maybe you have a low credit score and you're looking to get some credit restoration, you can call us in the next hour and we will answer your questions live on the air. So let's give out that number. It's 877 Eight five zero eight five eight five. That's, that's a catchy number. I like it. Do eight seven seven eight five zero eight five eight five. I like that, it. That's the number to call if you are interested in calling us on the air, and we will take your question and answer it here on the air. Think about it. When can you get free legal advice from two attorneys that are right. willing to sit there and answer any question you might pose? Of course, we want looking for questions that are regarding foreclosure, loan modifications, short sales, deed in lieu bankruptcy, credit restoration, debt settlement. Maybe you want to settle out a second mortgages. But, you know, there's lots of different topics. We're ready and willing to take your phone call. Right. So let's give it out one more time, 877-850-8585. So we've got the next hour to talk to you about what's going on that might affect you and might affect your rights. One of the big things, Will, uh -huh. that I've been dying to talk about, you know, we, we went off the air. We, I wanted a little bit of a break. Right. Five years of every time. Saturday, we were on the a air. Long time. It was a live show, <laughs> so every Saturday, we basically work six days a week. Absolutely. So I was like, okay, we're going to switch stations. Let's take a little bit of break. So we took a two month break. Uh -huh. But oh, Will, in those two months, there was so much news going oh, on that I, I, know. I was like, wait a minute. Chomping at the bit. We needed an outlet. I needed to tell people <laughs> what was going on out there and exactly. how it might benefit them. So here we are back on the air. I don't think we've even got enough time. No, to be able to go through no, all the great no, news. But hey, look, look, we're going to start. We're going to try to power through it and see what we can tell people and educate them about. Well, let's start out with Chase. Chase. Now, Chase, J.P. Morgan Chase, any of you out there that have a mortgage with J.P. Morgan Chase, Chase gotten into, oh, a little bit of trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a little. A, little a, a couple of billions worth of trouble. Let's try 13. <laughs> <laughs> Chase. Got, uh, agreed to a settlement with the Department of Justice wherein Chase agreed that they would 
uh, give a settlement of thirteen billion dollars. That's a B. Yeah, that's a B. And of that thirteen billion, they would disperse four billion dollars of that in loan aid. Uh, we always like when we hear that. What does that mean? Well, it, well, let's hope it means that they will give modifications to their existing mortgage mortgagors, which may include principal reductions. Yay. I like that. We love that. Principal reductions. That's right. So under the terms of the agreement struck in 2013, the bank is going to obtain credit for relief that it provides in four major categories. Mm -hmm. Loan modifications. We like that. Principal reductions. We love that. Low income and disaster area lending. That's great. Yeah, that's absolutely great. And anti blight lending. Mm -hmm. Hey, that might mm -hmm. mean some good help for not, Detroit. Uh, yeah, of course. Of course. I you love know, that my too. hometown. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I'm looking for some good mm -hmm. help for Detroit. But what, of course, we're focusing on is the loan modifications, which could include principal reductions love that. and interest rate reductions. Yeah. So, if you're out there and you've got a Chase mortgage and it's at 6.25%, and you're underwater, which 30% of Florida homeowners are underwater on their Still, mortgage, right. right? You might be able to qualify to benefit from this great settlement that Chase did and with the Department of Justice. And how can they do that to make sure they get the best results possible, Shay? Well, Will, I think they should call the law firm of Morris DuPont and schedule a free consultation and that's with free, one of us. And that's free, a free one-hour consultation. That's right. I'm happy to meet with anyone out there that's listening or offering free consultations to the listeners of the Morris DuPont Law Show. You can schedule your free consultation by calling this number, 800-974-974. 2712. That's 800 974 2712. If you call that number, you can immediately speak to someone here in the office. That's right. We're all sitting here in the law firm today on a Saturday. <laughs> right. Uh, and Jean is there. She's willing to take some phone calls and schedule your appointment to meet with one of us to see whether or not we believe that you could qualify for this Chase. Uh, settlement and how you could possibly trigger the kind of review that's necessary so that you could see your interest rate go down to as low as 2% and a principal reduction where the lender, Chase, will agree to forgive some amount of principal down to the current market value of your property. Isn't that, that exciting? That would be awesome. How about if they're driving in the car and can't take down the number, Shay? No problem. You just remember this. HomeMortgageLaw.com. Easy. HomeMortgageLaw.com. Or another way to get to the website, Morris DuPont. That's M-O-R-R-I-S. D-U-P-O-N-T dot com. MorrisDupont dot com, the name of the website. You go to our website and you will see the phone number or you can even uh, uh, click through and request someone from the office to call you to schedule we, we that appointment. We have some frequently answered, asked questions on our website, don't we? Lots of them. Lots of them. Lots and, uh, of them. We've even been accumulating some of the past shows we've done in other places. That's right. Yeah, we have we've, we've have a host of information accumulated Videos, on the website. Oh, don't ask. All kinds. If you'd like to see how the lovely <laughs> Shay looks like, you could go in there. And, you know. and the handsome Mr. Morris. Oh, stop it. <laughs> oh, now you're going to be modest? <laughs> you're going to be modest now? You know, I was just mentioning that... that, that uh, thirty percent of people in Florida that mm -hmm. have a mortgage right. have negative equity on that property. So what does that mean? That means that you owe your lender more than the property is worth. So let's start out with just what exactly what the states with the highest percentage of residential properties that are seriously underwater in the second quarter of 2014. Mm -hmm. Number one, Nevada. We're always competing always, with them for the Nevada. number one place. Always Nevada. Florida, Florida is in second place. Then we've got poor Illinois, Rhode Island, and Michigan. Again, my home state in right. there. Um, but the major metropolitan areas with the highest percentage of property seriously underwater are Fl Florida again. Florida, Lakeland, of Lake, poor Lakeland, Florida. Third place, Palm Bay in the Melbourne, Titusville mm -hmm. area. And then down in fifth place, we've got a lot of clients in this area, Will, Cape Coral, Fort oh, yeah. Myers. Yeah. All those empty lots over there. We oh, have yeah. so many clients that have empty lots that they were going to use you, for their retirement right. and build, build on. houses, yeah. And then it turns out those lots, we couldn't even give them You can't away. give them away. I know. You can't. The people and they paid, don't want to keep paying property taxes. Right, right. People them. paid good money for these lots, and now you cannot give them away. And certainly, the banks, you know, the banks are reluctant as well to take them back. So think about that. Yeah. 
really 30 percent of you out there that have a mortgage have a property that has negative equity you're underwater on that mortgage you owe more than that property is worth and you know what that's just the kind of mortgage help we specialize in helping people to evaluate what their options are with this property whether it's your primary residence or it's an investment property we can help you you know why commercial property yes Because there's programs out there that are tailor-made to help you. They understand that it does not make fiscal sense for you to keep that property if you have negative equity on it. It's worse than actually renting the darn (laughs) thing. I was about to say that. (laughs) (laughs) You know, know, it's because if in a rental situation, for example, if the refrigerator breaks, you call your landlord. He He has the obligation to come over and fix it. Now, if you own the house, you're not gaining any equity in the property because the property is worth less than you owe, and your refrigerator breaks, guess what? You've got to fix it yourself. Refrigerator? How about the roof? Oh, oh I, I was, going small. I was going small. A seven, eight thousand dollar roof. You know <laughs> exactly. what I mean? So it, it, you really got to evaluate whether it makes sense to stay in that property, or does it make sense to short sale that right. property, exit that property, and start again? So these are the kind of things that we analyze for you in that free consultation. So let's give that number out again so that you can schedule a free consultation with the lawyers at Morris Dupont. I'm happy to meet with anyone out there. And you're not going to believe the, the offices that we've got. I'm going to give you the number in a minute. Here's the offices. Dadeland, Doral, Aventura, Fort Lauderdale, Plantation, Boca Raton, West Palm Beach. So as you can see, offices, wherever you can hear our voice, there is an office nearby where we are happy to meet with you. That number to schedule your free consultation, free, 800-974-2712. And if you want to call in and ask a question of the experts here at Morris DuPont right now, call the radio station call in line at 877-850- Eight five eight five. We're I love ha- that number. Yeah, it's that's a great number. Yeah, eight seven seven eight five zero eight five eight five. Call that number, and you can talk to us on the radio. Ask your question. You don't have to give out your name. We're happy right. to just answer any questions you might have. Are you looking for a loan modification? Are you in the process? Is your property in foreclosure? Have we're- you just been served with foreclosure papers? Meanwhile, before we go on with that, I mm-hmm. see Florida again. South Florida, in particular, tops the list of the most filed foreclosures in the last quarter. That really made me sad when I saw that. that, You're right. We're we're always on the top of that list. Yeah, but the numbers were going down. They were going down. Like four or five quarters, they went down, and then boom. They're back up again. So if you've been serving foreclosure papers, you know that we've we've always been saying, I guess not on this airways but we've always said you know the, the banks have lawyers representing them and you should too you need legal counsel to understand how to respond to a foreclosure lawsuit and the people to call are the lawyers at morris dupont they're the ones who've been doing this since since before this whole oh yeah you know mortgage Making crisis affordable happened, right? didn't even exist it didn't even exist when we started this. right yep. so yeah give us a call at the office 800-974 2712, as lovely Shay says, people are standing by right now to take your call and to schedule your free one-hour consultation. And we call it, call it one-hour consultation all the time, but the reality is it's as long as it takes. <laughs> it and is. However long it I'm takes, not timing it. Right. However long it takes to make you understand what your problem is and what options you may have available to you, that's how long we're going to sit there with you. That's right. Absolutely right. And let's go back a little further in time. Well, mm-hmm. let's go back to the very beginning. Ah, nineteen ninety. But that beginning. Yeah, that beginning. <laughs> Will oh Morris God. and I, my my law partner and I, we met in law school. Law school. Yep. He was a year, oh, yeah. uh, one year ahead of me, yeah, or two years. One. Uh, one year. It might have been one. Yeah. yeah I graduated in ninety three. You graduated. Okay, it was in, two or ninety one. Yeah, you graduated right. in ninety one. Well, I was supposed to graduate in ninety two, but okay. you know, I grad I graduated in February of ninety three. Oh my so god! So I guess you were a year ahead of me. Yeah, yeah we met in law school, and we've been friends ever since. Ever since. And then our our business, our business, I guess, interests intersected. Right. And, and then we became partners six, six years, years ago. ago, and here we are. Yeah. You know. Plotting along, happy as ever. Couldn't be happier. <laughs> I really greatest. still look forward to coming to work <laughs> every single day. It's lovely. And you know why? Because we're helping people every <sighs> single day. I mean, the, the amount of people, you know, we sent out an email um, a couple of days ago advising people of our, of our new home and a mm-hmm. new show. And would you believe that there were almost 4,500 email addresses we had to send this notice out to? That's how many people have 
crossed paths with us in the last couple of years. That's a beautiful thing. That's an awesome number. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. we've helped so, so many, many of these people. Yeah, so you know? many people. So too. many people came to us on the verge of their houses being sold. So many people came to us not understanding what they need to do. So many people came to us with misconceptions of what they should and can do. And we ha- we've managed all these years to either set them down the right path and somehow assist them to getting out of an otherwise unseemingly you know helpless situation. That's it's right. great. It's so great. let's kind of uh, define what our two roles are within the firm. Sure. Will Morris? Maybe you'll educate me. What is my role? <laughs> Your role is to just look good every day, Will, and you do a darn good job of it. Well, that comes easy. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. Will Morris is a great foreclosure defense attorney, well recognized in his field, and so Will manages the foreclosure defense department as part uh-huh. of the litigation practice. So that's what I do. You're in court every day. Every you day. guys are that's the expensive lawyers, <laughs> right? Right. Exactly. You guys are the ones that 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 that, that get the big money. So litigation, you are in there doing it every day. You're in court, filing those motions, defending those pleadings. I, on the other hand, right. am managing the loss mitigation department. Well, well, let's before we get to that. Yeah. An awfully attractive woman, if, if I might say so Thank myself. Thank you, Mr. Morris. I've always thought so. That's very As a matter kind fact, of you. Two days ago, I said, you know what? You actually look glamorous today. That was very nice. I, and I meant you it myself. My day. Thank you. Thank You're you. Very You're welcome. Kind. You're welcome. Well, I manage the loss mitigation department, and what does loss mitigation mean? Well, loss mitigation means mitigating whatever the issue is that you have with your lender. And that typically means that what my department does is it negotiates directly with your lender. Unlike the litigation team, which is in the courts, we are speaking directly to the lenders, trying to find solutions for you, which could include a short sale, which could include a loan modification, which could include a consent judgment, which could include a deed in lieu. So we're negotiating directly with the lender. You know, one of the things that makes the law firm of Morris DuPont unique is that we don't just defend foreclosure lawsuits and keep you in that home as long as possible. What we do is we help you to find solutions so that you can either exit that property with grace and with as much of your credit score intact as possible, or we find a way for you to be able to stay in that home with a loan modification and and get a performing loan again. You know, some of the reasons that people went into foreclosure in the first place was because they had forced placed insurance, because they had they had a medical emergency and they Lost had the to job. prioritize yeah. and skip a couple of mortgage payments. And then when they tried to go back and make their mortgage payments up, the lender said, "No, you have to pay us the entire past, past due amount. amount." Which sometimes it'd be thousands and thousands Not of dollars. Possible. Right. Not right. possible. Right. Right. So, so that's yeah. that's the issue. Well, I, I listen. I see we have our very first call. Oh, we sure can do, you, Kurt and Boca. Can we can we take him? Hi, Kurt. Hey, hi. <laughs> Finally, a show that helps people instead of taking their money and investing into it. It's good to hear you. Well, that is our, that is our plan. Thank you for listening. Thanks for the call, Kurt. What can we do for you? I, I don't know if you can help me. I. I was uh, out of work for almost uh, eight, nine months, and I had to keep borrowing on my credit cards. Uh, oh. My home is underwater. I mean, uh, I own 435000 and it's only valued at four hundred. At one time, it was 700000 uh-huh. And it seems like I'm being sued by uh, the, the credit card companies because uh, the job I got does not pay even close to the income I was making. Mm-hmm. I'm not quite sure what to do or how to go about it. I told the credit card people, well, I'm not running. I'm going to try to pay you as I can, but oh, uh, it's hard to even mortgage. Maybe that's not the best solution. Maybe that's not the best solution to his problems. To, to, well, to... you know what? The lucky thing is we are actually at the law firm today, and we asked our bankruptcy counsel and the person who Uh, runs the debt settlement and credit restoration department, Michelle Hanash, we asked her if she would be on hold today in case there were any calls that came in that dealt with just your kind of topic. So we've got Michelle Hanash coming in. She's putting her headphones on. (laughs) Michelle, poor Kurt, he was unemployed for eight, nine months. He's underwater on his home. But one of the big issues that Kurt has is that he has a massive amount of credit card debt right now. 
you address that for well, him? Sure. So when, I, I, when we're yeah, oh, because sorry. I had to keep borrowing cash on the credit cards to pay of course the mortgage and the bills, and then all of a sudden of I'm over a hundred thousand dollars in credit card debt, and I, you know, I I got just got a job, and I just can't seem to I can't seem to get out. Catch up. You're on grounding right. here. Right. right. Well, the unfortunate truth is that you're not alone in facing this problem. And when I'm talking to individuals who are dealing with home problems, credit card problems, one solution may be bankruptcy. And the other solution might be debt settlement. And I'm going to give you a little information regarding both. And then maybe you'd want to come into the office and we can discuss in further detail which might be better for you. When we're talking about bankruptcy, it's a solution that addresses all of your problems. So... Either you want to stay in the house and maybe you need help. I don't know if you mentioned if you're behind no, on I your don't mortgage. Want to move. I, I love my home. Yeah, I, I don't want to move. Okay, so the good news is generally speaking, your home is a protected asset in Florida. And in your bankruptcy, whether it's a Chapter 7 or a Chapter 13, your home is protected. So you can file a bankruptcy and you can keep your home. If you need some help regarding getting caught up on mortgage payments because you're behind, then we're talking about a Chapter 13 bankruptcy. If well, you are not fine... Behind. I'm not behind on the mortgage. You know, okay. I'm barely making it, but I'm now two weeks late every month. At the credit cards, uh, I just I can't seem to even right. catch up on it. I'm so, really so, grounding. Yeah. So maybe if we give you a solution regarding the credit card debt, you're going to find that now you're not two weeks late on your mortgage payment every month. So when we file a bankruptcy, you will get a discharge of your unsecured debt, including your credit card debt, whether that be a Chapter 7, if you qualify for a Chapter 7, or if we're in a Chapter 13 where you're making monthly payments based upon what you can afford to make for three to five years, and at the end of that time, the remaining balance of your debt is discharged. So either a Chapter 7 or Chapter 13, while both protecting your home, will give you, the end result, a discharge of your unsecured debt. Now, the wow. other option, if, yeah, it's, it's really great. Now, the other option I never knew this. is... Yeah. Well, that's why we're here, to give you the information. But the other option is uh, debt settlement. Now, debt settlement can be, in a sense, more expensive, depending on your situation, than what you would pay in a bankruptcy. In debt settlement, we're typically getting great settlements, but they average around 35 cents on the dollar. So if you have $100,000 in credit card debt, then we're talking about settling your total debt for close to $35,000. That doesn't mean we can't ever settle for less, but that's, that's the average. And that's when we're not talking about litigation. I know you mentioned some of the lawsuits threatening to sue well, you, I don't know, or the creditors. Credit cards right now, uh, you know, that all of a sudden they're starting to, you know, put the pressure on, and uh, I've gotten my first uh, notice that it went to an attorney. And uh, I've right. always tried to so, tell them I'm not yeah. money, but I just can't afford them right now. Right, but you have to, the first thing you have to understand is that they, they're not compassionate you know, credit card companies, yeah. attorneys, they're not there to listen to your story. As valid as it is and as heartbreaking as it can be, they don't care. They want payment. And if you don't pay them, they very well may just sue you. And, and that's their, their goal. So unless you engage in some kind of a debt settlement uh, negotiation with them, which typically, like I said, is 35 cents on the dollar per account, so if you can save enough money for each card you have to settle for 35 cents on the dollar, we can do it one by one. You don't have to come up with $35,000 all at once. Uh, yeah, or we're talking... Can, you know, they, can they accept, like, payments if we settle and then I start paying that off? Well, what I'm talking about is choosing to settle each card individually. So when you individually negotiate each card, you want to be able to have a lump sum ready to go for each account. However, right, often so we can... Let's use an example. Sure. Okay. Let's say that, that Kurt has a $10,000 balance on one credit card. Sure. Oh, and yeah. so you're you're saying that the average that he would have to settle for is 3500 Do, Does he have to have $3,500 available, or will those lenders often agree to a payment plan to be, even on a settlement will they agree to allow him to pay that settlement over time well often at 35 yeah I, and I understand that question so often at 35 percent 
three months is typical. I can pretty much say I feel comfortable, yes, we can probably get you three months at 35 cents on the dollar. I have negotiated, sure, and, and that's, that's reasonable. That's very reasonable. I've negotiated 35 cents over a year, but that's not typical. When we start talking about long-term payments, one year, two year, maybe we're at 50%. Maybe we're higher. If we're so talking nice, about settling... Day, that, no, that'd be terrific. Sure, uh, sure. I, yeah. but, How do I stop yeah. the appointment? I think I need to come in and speak with you. Yeah, I, I think so. We there can you go. So go let's give that number out again so that Kurt can call the office and schedule that free consultation. Jean is here in the office now. She can schedule that consultation for you in any of our available locations, which includes Boca Raton, West Palm Beach, Aventura, Plantation, Fort Lauderdale, Dade Land Doral. That's 877 974 2712. Again, that's 877 974. Repeat yep. it again, please. 800 877 974. Oh, yeah. No, I think it's, it's 800, is it not? 800 right. 974. Oh, 2712. Thank you, darling. <laughs> got it. I just based got on it. that. I've got another number in front of me. Okay. okay. Call that number so and schedule your consultation. Repeat the number one more time for me, please. <laughs> okay. Sorry. 800 974 2712. 2712. I'll be calling. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank All right. you, Kurt. Well, thanks, thanks, so much thanks for, for the call. Thanks for calling. Look at that. Our very first call. Yay. Yeah, we love it. Yes. We love it. Looking for more. Right, Absolutely right, right. happy to be here. Answer your calls. Michelle Hanash. So nice of you to be here today. We we're thinking maybe we'll get a call on the bankruptcy. We've got so many different issues that we talk about. So let's talk about your bankruptcy department. Give everybody a little overview of exactly what your department does. So my department handles bankruptcy, credit restoration, and debt settlement. When we're talking about bankruptcy, generally for consumers, it's a Chapter 7 or Chapter 13. And Chapter 7 is the kind of bankruptcy that lasts about three to four months. It might be the typical or stereotypical bankruptcy people think of when they think of bankruptcy. You're getting a discharge of your unsecured debt, so your credit card debt, medical bills, and your home is protected. It's not a solution necessarily for retaining a home if you're facing um, problems and you might need a loan modification, although at the end of a Chapter 7, you still can try for a loan modification on your home, but it's not the Chapter 7 itself. All right. Well, I, hear the, I hear the music. I guess we have to go I to a break at the bar. Music. That's Time another to great go song. To a break. Really appreciate it. So happy to be back on the air with Will Morris, Michelle Hanash. I'm Shay DuPont, the Morris DuPont Law Show. Dr. Black Superfood, I haven't been sick. I was off all my prescription medications in the first 30 days. I lost 60 pounds. I mean, that's huge. Are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Wouldn't you rather be healthy, energetic, and fit? I'm Dr. Dennis Black. Ten years ago here in Dallas, I developed a Texas-sized solution to America's health crisis. TexasSuperfood.com I make my Texas superfood from 55 raw, organically grown, vine-ripened fruits and vegetables. Alfalfa leaf. Israel says three mortars have been fired from Gaza, and it happened less than an hour after a 12-hour ceasefire expired. It is not saying at this point who fired them. The U.S. Embassy staff in Libya will be in Tunisia for the time being. They were evacuated early today with fighting between militias in Tripoli on the rise. There's tighter security for today's U.S. Open of surfing at Huntington Beach, California, after police arrested a teenager who they say used social media to make terrorist threats against the event. Obviously, I'm sound photo wind forecast from the 850 WFTL Weather Center. 850 weather to word thunder showers, but the probabilities of rain are less than normal. Normally, at this time of year, we have about a 40 to 50 percent chance of daily storms, but with the southwesterly wind flow as it is, skies are partly cloudy. We're looking for a 15 percent chance of a slight shower, thunder shower this evening, 78, 25 percent on Sunday, mainly afternoon into the evening at 90, and then drops back to only 10 to 15 percent Monday at WFTL. Now back to the Morris DuPont Law Show. Once again, here's Will Morris and Shay DuPont. All right. 
So when we left off, I was talking about bankruptcy, Chapter 7 bankruptcy. So the Chapter 7 bankruptcy isn't typically what's going to be saving your home, although currently we are able to strip second mortgages in even a Chapter 7 bankruptcy. So that, that is a great solution. Then we look at Chapter 13. Chapter 13 is re uh, referred to as a wage earner's plan. So if you have income and you can afford to pay maybe a portion back of your debt over three to five years, Chapter 13 might be the option for you. And what you are paying back on your unsecured debt is supposed to be affordable. We're looking at your income, we're looking at your expenses, and then we figure out what your disposable income is, and that is what you are paying back over three years. It's like if you took all your creditors and said, listen, please, this is what I can afford to pay you, and then can we call it even, which of course they wouldn't do outside of bankruptcy law. Chapter 13 can help you save your home. It can help you get caught up. If you've had a, you know, a hardship, medical illness, loss of job, you got behind on your mortgage, but you can afford to get caught up over five years if they would let you, Chapter 13 can also help you in that respect. Yeah, but that's in, the, in addition to making your monthly mortgage payments. Right, so you're getting caught up. Right. And you're going back to making your regular monthly mortgage payment if you can afford right. to do that. Now you can also, uh, work with the loss mitigation department here while you file a bankruptcy and even try for a loan modification in the bankruptcy court as well. We can cram down on investment property. If you have a, a, a non-homestead non, uh, homestead property that's underwater, we can cram down even the first mortgage. What is, this, what is the concept of cramming down? Cramming down means if, if your property is worth 100000 and you owe 200000 we can cram that mortgage down to $100,000 on investment property. And on your home, we can strip off second mortgages, HELOCs, unsecured liens that have zero equity in them, completely stripped off in Chapter 13 bankruptcies. There's so many options for people right. out there. And really, that's the whole point of the Morris DuPont Law Show, is for you to understand that if you are having difficulty making your monthly mortgage payment, if you are having difficulty paying your credit cards, if you are in debt, if you feel overwhelmed, there are other options out there. You can't stick your head in the sand. You've got to deal with these issues because the earlier you deal with them, the more options that you have to m have different solutions available to you, such as loan modifications, such as bankruptcy, where you get a lot of bang for the buck and you're able to have these second mortgages, these home equity lines of credit forgiven on a, an investment property. You're able to walk away from that property, deed in lieu it, actually, you know, just have the defense efficiency waived and start over, get some breathing room. Right. Will Morris it manages the foreclosure defense department at, at Morris DuPont. And Will, what are you telling clients today that come in that have just been served with a foreclosure action? What is the minimum amount of time that you can keep someone in their property before they're going to have to either be experiencing a foreclosure sale or they are going to have to do the short sale? You know, I, I, I usually tell people on the conservative side, maybe, you know, 18 months or what we're looking at before mm -hmm. we have to start thinking in terms of an exit strategy. And when we mean an exit strategy, meaning that, you know, we can look at that point and determine whether or not that person's situation has changed sufficiently, they can now qualify for modification. If that, if that doesn't work, they can then short sale the property but we, we we try to be conservative like you say Shay. we like to under promise and over deliver <laughs> we like to say 18 months but I, I saw something recently you know that 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 a florida you know a judicial state has people on average spending more than seven or eight hundred days in, in, in their home after going into default on the mortgage you know i can't over do the math. two years well i was about to do the math Shay. You oh know, boy you know me in math i was oh, going to figure out eight you know, oh, these don't, months. Don't, don't even start. We, oh, we, it's no. only an hour show, okay. Will. It's right. only Never an Never mind. Hour I'm going to take your word for this about two years. <laughs> But so conservatively, conservatively, you like to months, tell yes. people that we can yes. keep them in their house for a minimum of 18 And, months. you know, some people might think, well, you, you, you might be advocating. 
loss mitigation department, my department needs some amount of time. Even what? if someone comes in and they say, look, I just got served with a foreclosure lawsuit yesterday. I can't get them a loan modification next week. Right. I'm going to need some time to put that application together, Absolutely. submit it to the lender. The lender's got to review it, then come back with typically a trial modification that that client is going to be in for three months before the lenders issue issues them a permanent. So I need right. six and months on my side. Right. And that's a good point because once you get filed, once you get served with a foreclosure lawsuit, you've got 20 days to respond to it. And, and Otherwise, you get a default judgment, and next thing you know, that property is being set, set up for sale within four, five, six months. Yeah. It can happen. I've seen it. Oh, yeah. And, and that's not enough time. What you're saying is not enough time to get anything done as far as loss and mitigation goes. Yeah, Broward yeah, County is moving very oh, quickly oh, yeah, these quickly. days with that rocket docket. Yeah. I mean, when, 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 when people are unrepresented and, and default judgments get entered against them, their property gets scheduled to be sold in as short as four or five months. And before you know, once that sale goes through, before you know it, the sheriff is at your door with a writ of possession saying you've got to be out. Aye, aye, you know, aye. and that's a, that is the worst possible outcome to a foreclosure lawsuit, having the sheriff show up at your house. Absolutely. Because what, ha what the sheriff does, they literally take all of your stuff and put them on <sighs> the sidewalk. Don't even want to picture like, something it, like it, that it's for It's horrendous. People. Can you imagine someone with young kids? No. It's horrendous. No. So, again, you cannot put your head in the proverbial, sa proverbial sand. You've got to be proactive. If a foreclosure lawsuit is filed against you, it was filed by a lawyer. You, chances are you don't understand what it is they want you to say in response, of it, in response to that foreclosure lawsuit. Chances are, you know, and I've seen it happen so many times, you know, the, the people get served with a foreclosure lawsuit. They call the attorneys that are listed on the papers. This is the bank's attorney. And, of course, the bank's attorney doesn't owes you no responsibility. He has no fiduciary responsibility to you. And they, they don't, they don't, they're not required to give you any legal advice. And they normally tell people, well, gee, you need to file a response. Just file something. And people will oh. file a letter with the court explaining their hardship and how they've lost their job. While it's a sad story, the letter is of zero legal import. It means nothing. No judge sees it. Nobody sees it. And therefore, that piece of paper is meaningless. Except that it might actually harm you. Because uh, what you're doing is actually right. admitting to certain allegations. Right. And not only that, you're waiving some defenses that might otherwise be available to you. So... My suggestion to you is you get served with a, with a foreclosure lawsuit. It is a legal, it is a lawsuit. It is legal papers. You call us here at Morris DuPont. We know what to do with it. We know how to respond to it. We know what your options may be. We know how to navigate those waters of, of litigation. We can respond properly, make sure you don't waive any defenses you might otherwise have. And we can give our loss mitigation the time they need to get you a modification if that's what you're looking for and that's, that, that's what you qualify for. That's to get right. you that short sale done if that's what you're looking for, is that, if that's what you're qualified you for. You know, I think some people actually hesitate because they think that they cannot afford an attorney. Now, I, I'm from the Midwest. We, mm -hmm. we don't like to talk about money. Right. You know, that's just uncouth. But the fact of the matter is, is that foreclosure defense attorneys aren't representing, re aren't representing people of great wealth. Absolutely. Because right. they're representing people who aren't able to make their monthly mortgage payments. Right. So, of course, the uh, fees for foreclosure defense are very affordable to people because you're dealing with people that don't have that necessarily that much you know, discretionary right. income that they can Well, that's why they're in the spend. position they are in the first place. Exactly. So don't hesitate because you think, oh, I can't afford an attorney. Believe me, it, chances are you can probably afford a foreclosure defense attorney to help you with this so that you can save what is probably the biggest asset you're ever going to have in your life and probably the one that, that is the most important to your family, and that is the roof over their head. Mm -hmm. So don't hesitate. Call the law firm of Morris DuPont. The telephone number to schedule your free conversation consultation in any of our offices. I'm going to give you the offices first and then the phone number. That's Dade Land, Doral, Aventura, Fort Lauderdale, Plantation, Boca Raton, and West Palm Beach. The phone number to call to schedule your free consultation is 800-974-2712. And if you'd like to call in and ask your question on the air, that number is 877-850-850. 8585. And if you're driving, you don't have to remember any of these numbers. Just remember MorrisDupont.com. That's M-O-R-R-I-S. 
D-U-P-O-N-T, the law firm of Morris DuPont. That's our website, morrisdupont.com. You'll find our phone number there so you can call later to schedule your consultation and check out our website. You'll get to see a picture of us and you will be able to see the frequently asked questions so that you can get a better idea of what we do and what we might be able to do for your particular situation. Will? Yeah, right. I know foreclosure defense, big, but we've got Michelle Hanash here talking bankruptcy as well and debt settlement and credit restoration, another great thing because people think, oh, if I go through any of this, now my credit's destroyed and I'll never be able to get another house. Tell them how untrue that is, Michelle. Oh, that's that's completely untrue. And, you know, a credit report is a living, breathing instrument. And even if you do have blemishes on there, Time heals many of those wounds, and you can actually also take proactive steps to try and repair. And that's one of the services we do provide here, which is knowing what the law says about what's allowed to be reported on your credit report and knowing how it's supposed to be reported. And then also asking for, you know, the credit reporting agencies to verify certain items on there that oftentimes we are able to get removed. So that's pretty much what we do in that credit repair process. And we do it over uh, several months, over a year actually, we engage in this work where we send multiple uh, letters to the credit reporting agency in the uh, hopes and results of getting items removed from the credit report. Absolutely. So, you know, none of this is really destroying your credit, whether you've gone through foreclosure, whether you've done a short sale, a loan modification where you had to go a couple of months to, that's not a problem. On average, any of these things results in a 150 point drop in your credit score. But guess what? The minute you finish any of these things, whether you complete your short sale, your foreclosure action is resolved, you've com- you're now in a permanent loan modification. Once you are either released of the personal liability on this Uh, obligation, or you are paying again on time, your credit score is going to pop up, we normally say, within 18 to 36 months. So it's certainly not fatal. It's salvageable. Absolutely. You know, the other thing I wanted to mention was, you know, we practice in an area of law which, unfortunately, is absolutely filled with, um, I'm embarrassed to say Uh, it. don't say it. Scammers. (sighs) Scammers. Scammers, people who take advantage of homeowners, people who take advantage of people who are already stressed out, vulnerable, yeah. stressed out. It's horrible. I'm ashamed of my fellow attorneys, fe- fellow people who have lo- got these loan modification companies, realtors Scam. who say, yes, I got your uh, deficiency waived in your short sale and they never did. I mean, right. the stories go on and on and on. Who are you going to trust? Well, Morris DuPont has been in uh, doing this for over five years. Check us out. Don't take our word for it. Check us out on avvo, A-V-V-O dot com. My name is Shea, C-H-A-E, DuPont. Check out our reviews. Check us out with the Better Business Bureau. Check us out with the state. You'll see there's no complaints against the law firm. We have a very simple business plan. Do the best work possible for homeowners. And, and do what they ask you to and try to get the best result possible for them. And that's what we do day in and day out. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's a simple, simple, simple formula. Yeah. You know, we keep to that formula. We have countless amounts of happy people who have come to us, you know, in dire straits and gotten some really outstanding results and people who are living in their homes. We've got records in this office, you know, that that, that are mind-boggling. I know she likes to brag about it. I do. Where's the horn? Where's the blow horn? (laughs) I might be from the Midwest and we might be humble, but come on, our record for a principal reduction on someone's mortgage, uh-huh. seven hundred and twenty-six thousand dollars forgiven. Oy. Do you understand that, folks? Someone came to us with a mortgage. Granted, the uh, the mortgage was over a million dollars. That's not typical for us. Our typical mortgage that we deal with is anywhere from about one hundred and fifty thousand to two hundred and eighty thousand. But this was a little outside of our range. But it was a one point two million dollar mortgage but they were so severely underwater. It was a condo in Miami Beach that had, had been fraught with fraud. So the, it just, you know, the value dropped like a rock. Mm-hmm. And, and we were able to get a principal reduction for them. So now they have a, a principal balance on their mortgage just a little under 600000 More than 50% was wow. forgiven 
by the lender. And think about it. All these lenders today that have these settlements that they've done with the Department and of Justice. And there seems to be a host of them. A Auckland. Of, oh, yes. City. City. J.P. Morgan Chase. Bank of America. Bank of, oh, U.S. Bank. U.S. There, Bank, there right. HSBC, HSBC. PNC just did a big one. They're all getting penalized for, for, for these uh, mortgage-backed securities that were sold. Were sold and uh, they're, they're entering into huge settlements, and part of those settlements require them to pass some of that monies on to homeowners in the form of modifications with principal reductions, things we love, 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 love to hear. And so, you know, the truth of the matter is you should try to take advantage of these things. And again, the only way you can really know and really get the professional help you need to see whether or not you can get take the benefit or, uh, or harness some of the benefit from these settlements is to call us here at Morris DuPont. Absolutely. 800-974-2712. That's to schedule your yeah. free consultation. Will, we've got a great question coming up for you. Karen uh -huh. is on the line, and she wants to understand what is an acceleration ah, warning. Ah. Hi, Karen. Hi, Karen. Hi, guys. Um, Hi. I just wanted to sort of set this up really quickly um on my homestead exempted primary property homestead exempted property i had an issue mm -hmm. where there was a screw up at the uh palm beach county tax collector so they took the homestead exemption off now they've since returned it and um my mortgage and my mortgage payment is my for my taxes property taxes well you know that that price means that um the mortgage company paid a little bit more for 2013 14 Right. Um, so they raised the mortgage rate. I wasn't aware of it, so I've been paying the regular rate, seven hundred dollars, you know, uh, every month on time. Um, mm -hmm. In one fell swoop, I had like three or four different letters in my box, all from my mortgage company, <laughs> and all of them were statements in which three to four times the amount of my mortgage sure. uh, was right. due. And then also in that was an acceleration warning. Notice of mm -hmm. intent to, uh, to foreclosure. Sure. So, um, so once I called them, I said, you know, to, to explain to me what is going on. I've been paying. Where is it? Long story short, they said that they continue to pay, uh, take the old amount of my property taxes for two months, but for the last two months decided not to do that. So what it looks like is that I'm paying lesser amount on my mortgage, and mm -hmm. from that they said, well. That just means that you haven't paid full mortgage amount and there is an intent for foreclosure. So I'm right, just so trying to understand created, what this means. Right. You created essentially an escrow shortage. And because you weren't paying the full amount that they required you to pay, they applied those monies that you were paying to pay the insurance and therefore not paying your mortgage and putting you in default. Now, once you're in default, the bank is required under your mortgage documents to send you a letter advising you that because you're in default, they are now determined they're not going to take any monthly mortgage payments from you. They want the full balance, and that's what's called the acceleration clause. So they've accelerated the full balance due on your mortgage as opposed to taking monthly mortgage payments because you're now in default. What a rat's nest this I is, know. Karen. I'm so sorry to hear this happen. This was a problem that originated, and, and this is, I won't say it's typical, but it's not rare no, either. What happened is the property appraiser's office makes a mistake, and so your le so they say instead of your property taxes being $2,500, they are $4,500. The lender, the lender who pays your taxes because you're escrowing your taxes as part of your mortgage payment, they get the bill for $4,500 and they pay it. Well, it had already, all, always been $2,500. Right. Suddenly... The escrow uh, is short, short by two thousand dollars. Two thousand dollars. So when you make that seven hundred dollar payment, you think you're paying PITI, right. principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. But because you had that shortage, they're taking that seven hundred dollar payment and they're, they're applying, applying it, it to the, the escrow shortage. Only first. to the escrow right. shortage, so they don't see a monthly mortgage payment being made. Only a uh, a um, Clean it towards your escrow balance. Right. So right. you've got to be in contact. Who's your lender? Chase. Chase. So you've got to contact Chase's escrow department and see whether or not they have gotten a credit from the property appraiser's office. Correcting that overage. Correcting the, the overage because they right. overpaid, so they, sh they are due 
a $2,000 credit from the property appraiser's office, which is a credit that will help you to become more current right. because they already probably have fulfilled the uh, past due escrow balance. So now they've got to make sure that they've got, got to be on top that. of that because I could see a situation happening where even though they might have gotten a $2,000 credit, yep. the monies they've put towards the shortage in the first place, they may not take it out of there and apply to the mortgage payments, to the principal and interest. That's a very good point, They may Will. not, right. There's, a, there's something, Karen, called a suspense account. Right. And a suspense account is this weird account that each lender has where they're not applying funds that you have paid or, you know, uh, so someone for your benefit has paid. And they're not applying it to your mortgage payments and they're not applying it to your escrow. It's just kind of sitting there. And yeah, sometimes right. we've had to force these lenders Absolutely. to properly apply monies that are sitting in the suspense account to where we want those monies applied to. So you've got definitely an issue that could really you it, know, right. it could explode. really wind, and wind up into a foreclosure lawsuit yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Really. so you're going to have to be unfortunately very proactive to get through this red tape but a, an acceleration a notice of acceleration is a statutory requirement that the lender makes after you've gone 80 days past due so by getting an acceleration letter that means that the lender considers you to be more than 80 days past due and you're going to have to well the letter usually says you have 30 days to pay the past due amount right and if right. you don't it then it's, it, it says we're going to refer to our foreclosure lawyers and we're going to file a foreclosure lawsuit right and you're going to so unfortunately you're going to have to do some things in writing to document right. your responses you can't just do it orally over the phone when you get off the phone with chase sometimes you're going to have to put it in writing and fax yeah, I, th it I think in. you should write an objection to the amount owed that's the, the, that's one of the, the options they gave you in that acceleration letter what area of town do you live in Palm Beach County. You live in you live in okay. Palm Beach County. Yeah, you can also schedule a free consultation, and we can sit down with you and tell. And I, I don't mind calling Probably the lender. The phone yeah, I don't mind right. calling Chase also and documenting some stuff with them to make sure that they're doing everything clearly for you. Can I just ask you really quickly on the acceleration warning? Once you get it, like they said, there is a free. Everything you said is exactly what they said. Um, but and then they're they're like, well, if you just pay X amount, let's say five hundred dollars, you will be caught up. Um, what I'm wondering is, how does that affect me as my credit? How does that not, you know, how does that affect me to just pay that, or well, well, is it okay to just pay I, it and be done with it? it, it there's a possibility of that. However, you know, the fact that they're deem, they're sending you that acceleration letter, they're only deeming you to be in default. And they might have reported you as being in, you know a month or two past due to begin with. I mean, you could certainly correct the the deficiency or what the amount you owe by paying what they ask you in the acceleration letter, but that doesn't necessarily mean the past two months that you, they're claiming that you're, you're, you've been in default it doesn't still be reported in your credit report. Well, let's get Michelle Hanash back in here because she, of course, does credit re restoration. So, Michelle, you've probably seen circumstances like this before. Would your first uh, uh, advice be for her to just pull her credit report today? I would, I would advise you. You can pull your credit report for free from annualcreditreport.com, and you can pull each of your three major uh, credit reporting bureau credit reports, and you can see how the lender is reporting. And if they have been reporting you as past due, we can take steps to try and fix mm. that. Now that you paying the $500, we can still take the steps to fix that. So I, I don't see why maybe you wouldn't want to get current if you could, even if they've made mistakes, and then right. take the steps with yeah. the loss mitigation department to perhaps fix the escrow account, and we can then take steps to try and ensure that they're going back and fixing the way that they were reporting on your credit report. And not only that, moving monies from that suspense account and applying it properly. Right. But, Karen, I, you know, give it your best shot. See what you can do. Just make sure you're documenting everything. You know, we use these, le you know, legal pads. We put the name of the person we spoke to, a summary of, of what the conversation was. And if they say they're going to do something, you also want to say, okay, I'm going to stay on the phone with you. You go ahead and put notes in my file so that you don't care who you talk to each time you call Chase, if it's your Spock, your single point of contact, or someone else, because everything has been documented properly in the notes section of your file so that anyone can go in there and read for the first couple of minutes that they're on the phone with you and be totally up to date mm -hmm. as to what 
Chase should have been doing and what Chase promised to do and whether or not it has been done. So documenting is also a big part of it. You want to make sure you're doing that each time that you communicate with Chase, whichever department it is, but you're going to have to be proactive in untangling this yourself or, you know, I don't think you're at the point where you need legal counsel to do it, but, but it's going to take some amount of effort on your part. Right. Sounds good. Guys, you guys are great. I really appreciate you having the show. Never stop. Well, thanks for listening. We really appreciate it. Thanks for the call. Thank you so much. Bye. And, again, that number to call if you are interested in a free consultation with the persons at the Morris DuPont uh, Law Show. That's Will Morris, Shay DuPont, Michelle Hanash. You just need to call this number, 800 974 2712. We're just about wrapping up the very first the very show first, uh, of the Morris DuPont Law Show quickly, here it? on WFTL. Very happy to be here at our new home. Very happy. Uh, w- uh, I want to just say absolutely thank you to Gary Reese for bringing us over awesome, here. Awesome. All the people at WFTL have been wonderful. Really uh, a joy. Tony, Tony working the board yeah. for us today. Uh, absolutely. It's yeah. been Thank great. You, Tony. Michelle coming in, taking time out of their Saturdays again. <laughs> uh, so don't forget, whether it's foreclosure defense, loan modification, short sales, uh, deed in lieu, uh, bankruptcy, Chapter 13, Chapter 7, um, uh, straight straight uh, uh, real estate yeah. contracts, straight litigation. Yeah. The, the members of the uh, law firm of Morris DuPont are here for you. We are here 24-7. We're giving out our cell phone numbers at time. My cell phone uh, number yeah. is on my business card. Get called all the time. Absolutely. So we're very, very happy to be here. Don't forget, if you are interested in meeting with any of us, you can call the law firm. Again, locations, Dadeland, Doral, Fort Lauderdale, Aventura, Plantation, Boca Raton, West Palm Beach. The number to call, 800 800- Nine seven four twenty seven twelve, and if you missed any part of the show, we're going to be rebroadcast oh, right. tomorrow. tomorrow. What is that, Tony? It's at one o'clock. That's right. One, one o'clock, yeah. right here on WFTL uh, eight seventy AM, and uh, we will be so back. You'll be hearing us again. You can hear the entire show tomorrow or on the website at morrisdupont.com. We're going to put it up on the website. Yeah. Uh, I'll probably be up there within a week. Morrisdupont.com is the name of the. Sorry, Will. What's to do next week? Out of time. (laughs) All right, see, see you.